Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Rajeshwar from YR PharmaTube. In today's class, we discussed an introduction to anti-diabetic agents which are used in the treatment of diabetes disease. Upon completion of this lesson, you will be introduced to anti-diabetic agents, the two major types of diabetes mellitus disease and the classification of anti-diabetic drugs. The pancreas is a large gland that is present under the stomach and plays an important part in glucose metabolism. It has a dual role. Number 1. Secreting both digestive enzymes that is pepsin and trypsin into the duodenum via the pancreatic duct. And number 2. Releasing insulin and glucagon, the key hormones in glucose regulation into the blood. These two hormones are released from the small clusters of glandular cells called the islets of Langerhans. Islets of Langerhans are divided into three types as alpha cells, beta cells and gamma cells. Alpha cells secrete glucagon, beta cells secrete predominantly insulin and a small concentration of amylin and gamma cells secrete somatostatin. These hormones play an important role in regulating metabolic activities of the body, particularly glucose homeostasis. Insulin and glucagon are antagonistic to each other. When blood glucose concentration increases, the beta cells secrete insulin and when blood glucose concentration falls below normal range, glucagon is secreted. Thus, blood glucose concentration is maintained within normal range that is 70 to 120 mg per dl by negative feedback. Amylin is a peptide that is secreted from the beta cell granules along with insulin. It works synergistically with insulin to lower blood glucose in response to meals. Skeletal muscle is responsible for most of the glucose taken up from insulin stimulation. Insulin is the primary hormone which is responsible for controlling the storage and utilization of cellular nutrients. It activates the transport systems and the enzymes involved in the intracellular utilization and storage of glucose, amino acids and fatty acids. Insulin inhibits catabolic processes such as the breakdown of glycogen, fat and protein. The overall effect of insulin is hypoglycemic. The other pancreatic hormone glucagon mobilizes glucose from its stores and causes hyperglycemia. The third pancreatic hormone somatostatin originally discovered as a hypothalamic hormone inhibits the secretion of both insulin and glucagon. Deficiency of effective insulin in the body causes a disease called diabetes mellitus in which there is altered metabolism of carbohydrates, lipids and proteins. This results in hyperglycemia and glycosuria. If this metabolic disorder is left untreated, retinopathy, nephropathy, neuropathy and cardiovascular complications may result. Some of the more important symptoms associated with the disease are polydipsia, poly urea, polyphagic and ketonemia and ketourea. Administration of insulin and insulin preparations or other glucose lowering agents can reduce morbidity and mortality associated with the disease. Diabetic patients are always look tired, frequent urination, sudden weight loss, wounds that won't heal, sexual problems and some vaginal infections in females, always feel hungry, they have blurry vision, numbness and tingling effect in hands or feet and always feel thirsty. The disease diabetes mellitus abbreviated as DM. Diabetes is a condition wherein the body no longer produces insulin or uses insulin efficiency. Insulin is a hormone that is needed to convert carbohydrates and other food into energy needed for life. Diabetes mellitus is a metabolic disorder characterized by hyperglycemia and associated with impaired carbohydrate, fat and protein metabolism. The disease is the result of defects in insulin secretion or insulin action which progressively leads to chronic microvascular, macrovascular and neuropathic complications. The American Diabetes Association recognizes four clinical classifications of diabetes. Number 1 type 1 diabetes, number 2 type 2 diabetes, number 3 gestational diabetes and number 4 diabetes due to other causes such as genetic defects or medications. 
most patients can be classified clinically as having either type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes gestational diabetes is usually diagnosed during pregnancy it occurs more often in women who are obese have a family history of diabetes and are members of a high risk ethnic group type 1 diabetes Type 1 diabetes was formerly called insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. It accounts 5 to 10% of patients with diabetes and is largely recognized as autoimmune disease which is characterized by destruction of pancreatic beta cells. Because the pancreas can no longer produce insulin, type 1 diabetes have an absolute requirement for exogenous insulin. The symptoms of type 1 diabetes often come suddenly, can be severe and include polydipsia, polyuria, polyphagia, weight loss, fatigue and diabetic ketoacidosis. Type 2 diabetes it was formerly called non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. It accounts for 90 to 95 percent of adult cases of diabetes, which is characterized where the patient develops by insulin resistance and deficiency. Insulin resistance is associated with a number of physiological factors such as hyperinsulinemia, hypertension, dyslipidemia, hypercoagulation, pro-inflammatory state, and abdominal obesity are more often referred to as the metabolic syndrome. Non-diabetic patients with metabolic syndrome are at high risk for the development of type 2 diabetes and about 2 to 4 times greater risk of developing coronary heart disease and stroke. In addition, type 2 diabetes is usually associates with race, lack of physical activity and a family history of the disease. Diagnosis of Diabetes the American Diabetes Association has established four criteria for the diagnosis of diabetes. Number one, a fasting plasma glucose that is greater than or equal to 126 mg per dl. Number two, a two hour oral glucose tolerance test of greater than or equal to 200 mg per dl. Number three, in patients with symptoms of hyperglycemia that is polyphagia, polyuria, polydipsia and weight loss, a random plasma glucose of greater than or equal to 200 mg per dl or number four hemoglobin a1 that is hb a1c of greater than or equal to 6.5 percent in addition the american diabetes association has recognized a pre-diabetic state for patients who are a risk of developing diabetes the criteria include an fpg that is fasting plasma glucose of 100 to 125 mg per dl referred to as impaired fasting glucose and a two hour oral glucose tolerance test of 14 to 199 mg per dl and an hba1c of 5.7 to 6.4 percent the hba1c is perhaps the most accurate indicator of glucose because it reflects plasma glucose levels over the previous two to three months and is now accepted as ideal standard for assessing glycemic control treatment of diabetes mellitus Diabetes is a complex chronic disease with no cure. Therefore, therapy is directed at controlling hyperglycemia and reducing the symptoms and morbidities associated with microvascular and macrovascular complications. Two major classes of drugs used to treat diabetes include number one, insulin and insulin preparations and number two, oral hyperglycemic agents. Insulin and insulin preparations are natural hormones and they are generally administered in injectable form. Oral hyperglycemic agents are administered orally and they are mostly synthetic compounds. Oral hyperglycemic agents are further divided into five types. Number one, sulfonylureas. Number two, biquanides. Number three, meglitinides. Number four, thiazolidine dions. And number five, alpha glucosidase inhibitors. The examples of drugs under each class has also been mentioned in the figure. The details of each class of drugs as per the course content will be discussed in the coming classes. This is the list of references followed for the lecture. That's all about the introduction to anti-diabetic agents. In the next video, we will learn the first type of anti-diabetic agents that is insulin and insulin preparations. Till then, never stop learning and never stop watching my videos. Thank you for watching this video.